Well, how do you two, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, we're going to continue to build on our Windows Lab series, or Unky Joe's Playhouse Lab series. As you know, we've been contacted by Unky Joe. Hi. He wants us to set up his his business network. Uh, so that's what we're doing in this video. What we're going to do is is we're going to cover creating another Windows 10 image, but this time we're going to pre-install some applications on this image. And then we're going to uh, sysprep it and export it. And I'm going to show you the steps required to do that. So come on along for the ride. All right, YouTube. So now it is uh, time to... Wow, let me uh, fix my monitor here. Let me... Uh, fit to screen? There we go. Now you can see me. I could also do what's called a stretch to screen. There we go. That works too. Okay, so hopefully you can see everything. So um, what I want to do now is I want to import that gold image that we exported. Normally what I would do is just run the import uh, off of the network drive, but because I have Synology as my shared storage, it does not give me the same features. In other words, it doesn't have the right set of permissions to store image files. Uh, Microsoft's very picky about where it allows you to export and import from. So what I do is I just create an export on my local drive and then I copy that over to the Synology and then when I need it, I copy it from the Synology uh, to the local hard drive on the server I'm working on and uh, then import it from there, which is what I'm going to do right now. So on this PC I have a uh, SSD hard drive and under there I have an exports folder and that's where we put the Windows 10 Pro 1909 gold image that we created previously <clears throat> in my previous video. So today what we're going to do is we're going to import that into another virtual machine. Then we're going to go, uh, we're going to boot it up and uh, we're going to go out and we're going to add a bunch of software to it. And then we're going to create a new image out of that. Uh, we're, we'll re prep that after we get all the applications installed. And then we'll create a new gold image with specific programs on it so that we have that to build on our lab from. So here's our machine that we created last time, the Windows 10 Pro 1909-001. And, and you see I have a Windows 7 machine running down there too. I wonder what that's for. So basically what you do is you go into Hyper-V Manager, you come here to Import Virtual Machine, and you follow the wizard. So I'm going to click Next, and I'm going to browse to that folder on the V drive called Exports, and then Windows 10 Pro 1909 Gold. I'm going to select that folder, click Next. There's the image, there's the date it was created, and the time. Click on Next. Now it's very important that you copy the virtual machine and create a new unique ID or you could have problems down the road. So click on next. Then if you want to store the uh, virtual machine in a different location right now, mine is set to store it to the iSCSI drive. That's fine. I think I have enough uh, free space on that iSCSI. Let's go look. That's my iDrive. Yeah, I've got plenty. I've got 200 gig free on that unit. So that'll be fine. Click on next. And the virtual hard disk, it's going to store it in the same place on the iDrive, which is the iSCSI. Click on Next, verify that your settings are correct. Click on Finish, and go grab yourself a cup of coffee or your favorite adult beverage until this is done. All right, so the import is done. That took less than five minutes, but I'm such I'm so picky about names. The first thing I'm going to do is come in here, go to Settings, and I'm going to rename this. I don't like that name. Uh, first of all, I don't know why I put a hyphen after the 10. So this will be Windows 10 Pro 1909 dash. Uh, let's see, what do we want to call this? Uh, app Gold? How about App Gold? That way I know that the applications are installed on here and it's a gold image. Uh, let's put a description in here. Windows 10 Pro Image uh, Pro 1909 Image with apps pre pre installed. Now I'm hoping this is going to work. I'm going to go ahead and apply on that. 
And I'm also going to rename this hard drive. So I'm going to browse over to here and I'm going to call this just so there's no confusion. Uh, all right. Uh, so let me rename that. So W10P dash. What did I call it? Uh, 1909 uh, dash app gold <laughs> it seems like a funny name but I'm gonna go ahead and use it and apply on that so now we should just be able to connect to that and go ahead and start that machine hopefully I haven't screwed anything up Now the first time it comes up it's going to take some time because it's going to be just like you first installed Windows 10. So I'm not going to sit here and watch the make you watch the spinning circle of death. I'll cut the video here and we'll come back when something exciting happens. So OBS has this new pause feature where the, where they will allow you to I always turn my gain down on this microphone, and I apologize for that. Anyway, they allow you to pause the video while you're recording, so I'm not going to take you through this whole thing. You know how to set up Windows. This is the initial setup it's going to go through. I want to save the good stuff for the uh, meat and potatoes for the actual installing of apps because we're going to use a an application gathering program that I have used for years, and I'm going to show it to you here to make your life pretty easy so I'm gonna pause the video here while I do stuff in the background and we'll come back when something important is happening all right so uh, we got Windows installed we got it set up we don't have it activated so uh, I've got my image created now so we're good right no we need to add applications to this image so at this point you have some options and I'm sorry I'm gonna futz with my microphone again because I'm obsessive compulsive about that stuff um you need to decide whether you want what apps you're going to want so for example i know i'm going to want google chrome i'm going to want uh probably winzip and vlc media player and a bunch of other apps to be part of this image now if i were in a, a commercial or a, a yeah a commercial environment with a client, uh, might have something like Office 365 or LibreOffice on there uh, on all my images. But for the sake of making things simple, we're just going to pick a select few applications, and we'll save. You know, maybe putting Office 365 or LibreOffice for a different video because honestly, I haven't tested it, and I don't know what kind of uh, problems we're going to have with that. So I've got the window set up now. It's in the correct time zone. It's part of the network pretty much. It doesn't need to be. Now I want to get my applications loaded. So I use a little program called Ninite. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Oh, and I may have to click on this more than once. So if you just go into your browser and type N-I-N-I-T-E, what Ninite does is it goes out and it collects applications for you and creates an install file where it just installs the apps all at one time so they have a free version uh, but they also have a pro a pro version you'll have to see which one suits your needs best and it doesn't have all the programs on here but probably the majority of ones you're going to want to use so uh, i'm just going to select some here i want to install chrome I don't use Opera or Firefox. I don't need Java, but if you did, I don't use any of the messaging. Let's see, uh, Foxit Reader, if you want to use that instead of uh, Adobe's PDF Reader, you could install LibreOffice. I'm not going to install any of those or OpenOffice. But let's see, I do want, uh, let's see, I do want VLC Media Player. What else do I want on here? Let's, uh, I don't need Handbrake on this one, don't need Audacity. Let's see if they have, I don't think they have Office 365. Even though I said we're not going to do that, we could. I definitely want 7-Zip. I'm tempted to install Foxit because if not, it defaults to uh, Edge for the uh, PDF reader. But actually, most of my clients prefer to use, I know, Adobe Acrobat. 
but let's see what else they have in here. Let's go ahead and put Notepad++. It's always comes in handy on there. Uh, I like to have Putty on there, but I'm not going to worry about that. So I'm not even going to choose Security Essentials because it's already installed on here. But you can see you have a plethora of applications in here. So for this video, we're just going to uh, select Chrome, uh, 7-Zip, Notepad++, uh, VLC. Well, you know, this is for Unky Joe's Playhouse. So let's go ahead and install LibreOffice as well, just for shits and giggles. Okay, so once you've selected the apps, then step two is to download and run your custom installer update. So if we click on that, it creates a download link for us that we just save. And then now we can go ahead and click on run. And I'm going to close the browser window. So I'm going to give it permission to run. It'll prepare the setup. And then what I like to do is click on details. So it tells you it's downloading Chrome, then it'll be downloading 7-Zip or it'll install. Uh, but basically, you just kick back and wait for this to finish. So I'm going to shut up and let this run. All right, so all of our apps have now been installed. And as you can see, if we close this here, here we have LibreOffice, we have Google Chrome, we have Notepad++, VLC Media Player, and we should now have, as part of File Explorer, we should have 7-Zip. Yes, we do. So, <clears throat> it looks like that was successful. Now, that was easy, wasn't it? So, there's no reason not to use Ninite uh, to install your apps. I mean, there are others... There are other similar programs out there. It's just I've been using Ninite for years, and I find it very helpful uh, to uh, create images or to help put programs back onto a machine. And I don't know how customizable it is, and I'm sure there are other programs out there that do the same thing or better. But uh, once you choose something you like, you stick with it. So there you go. So now the next thing we need to do is try and sysprep this image again. But I want to go out one more time and just make sure there haven't been any more Windows updates. So I'll click Update and Security. I'm going to go ahead and check. Because sometimes you know how Microsoft is. Uh, today is Wednesday. So Patch Tuesday could have come out and put in a patch. Since I've done this, uh, done this image. In fact, I did this image back in February, didn't I? And oh my god, look how many updates there have been since February. Quite a few. So it's very important before, uh, well, for my purposes and for the purpose of this video, that you also do your updates to your operating system before you re-image again. You don't want to have to every time, say you had to make 20 VMs out of this or 20 physical machines, you don't want to have to go back and update all 20 of those machines and eat up a lot of bandwidth on your network and your internet connection and could create all kinds of problems. So do your updates. Then we'll come back once all the updates are done and we'll re-image the machine or we'll sysprep it again. So let's let this run. So here I am three, four days later. No, I'm just kidding. It's just a little while later. I got all the updates done. Well, I say that. Let me see what my notification is. Oh, I need to activate Windows. Well, we're not going to worry about activating Windows. What I am going to do is see if my applications that I've installed run. Uh, so we'll try LibreOffice first. Okay, so there's their Word, uh, their copy, their version of Word. Let's see, Notepad++ should be working. Yes, it is. Okay, so... I think what we're ready to do now is sysprep this image and uh, uh, and then move on from there. So let's go back to our Windows folder. So go to C, go to Windows, System32, find the sysprep folder, and hopefully this will work. 
Now, one thing I haven't done this with is with Office 365. So, and a lot of my clients use Office 365. In fact, I do believe Joe over at Unky Joe's Playhouse uses Office 365, but he's wanting to move to an open source version. So, that's why we're using LibreOffice in this image. Uh, so, let's go ahead and do sysprep. We're going to do out of box experience and make sure we shut down the machine. So we'll let this run. Now I have encountered in the past where if you do uh, a major Windows update, like from 1903 to 1909, it would foobar the sysprep process. In other words, instead of installing and upgrading from 1903 to 1909, you would just install a fresh install of 1909 and sysprep from there. I guess the 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 process of adding the updates from 1903 to 1909 does something to screw up sysprep, if that makes sense. So, all right, so we'll let this run. I don't know how long it's going to take, maybe five, ten minutes, uh, but I will come back when something changes. All right, so sysprep took about two minutes. It's uh, shutting down now. So now we've got the virtual machine created. We got the image done. Now I'm going to come out here and I'm going to edit the settings. All right, let's come down here. And we'll go 1909. We'll get rid of this. And we'll type in, we have LibreOffice. We have Notepad++. We have, oh, sorry, 7-zip. Uh, VLC and we have Chrome all installed on this image so I'm just gonna make a note here the other thing I'm gonna do is eject the DVD ROM it's not needed when we make the image so there we go we've got it created we called it app gold and the next thing we want to do is export it so that we can make copies of this next time so we can either highlight it and come over here and choose export or we can just right click and choose export and we're going to save that to our v drive our exports we have to save it here before we can copy it over to the synology now so go ahead and select that folder click on export and we'll come back when that's done all right so we're back and it was successful it took about two three minutes so Let's minimize this. Let's go to our V drive and let's just verify that that image is out here. And there it is, Windows 10 Pro 1909 App Gold. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and I'm going to paste it into my exports folder on my Synology NAS. So we'll let that copy over. Now, while that's going on, let's come back and what we want to do is get rid of this virtual machine now we're done with it we don't want to run off of this we could in theory rename this boot it up and make it another workstation but for for the purpose of this video i'm just going to delete the image uh, or delete the virtual machine so i'm going to come over here right click and delete now just so you know that does not delete the virtual hard drive so i'm going to open another uh window here for File Explorer, and we're going to go over to our iSCSI and Hyper-V and our virtual hard disk, and you'll see that we still have the App Gold image for Windows 10 Pro. So we have that safely backed up to the Exports folder, and we've now and we're now copying that onto the Synology now, so we can right-click on here and we can actually get rid of it. And it tells us the file is too big to recycle. Do we want to permanently delete it? And I'm going to tell it yes. And then uh, the app gold image will finish copying over to our Synology NAS in just a few minutes. So now, as you also notice, our V drive is kind of filling up here pretty quickly because it's not that big of a drive. Sorry, I want to uh, open in a new window. Yeah, so our, our V drive is only 115 gig. It's part of a 256 gig SSD drive. I've split it up, part of it to the OS and part of it to just temporary virtual machine storage so that we have somewhere to put the images 
while they're copying over. So uh, we'll let this finish. All right, so we safely have that now copied over to our, as you can see here, MCS NAS exports folder. There it is right there. There's the virtual hard disk, the virtual machine, and any snaps, shots associated with it. So that's how I do uh, backups and uh, move images around on my network. Your mileage might vary. Now, like I said, if you had a Windows, a true Windows file server, uh, it might make it a little bit easier to do your exports because you could then import and export them from a Windows uh, share uh, instead of Synology. The problem is you need to have what's called the system account in order to read and write out of Hyper-V uh, these image files in order to export and import them. That's why uh, I have to copy them onto a local hard drive on the on the machine I'm using because Synology does not support that system account uh, in its file share. So just buyer beware. So there you go. That's the that's the way I put programs on images and then save them for future use. So as you know, we're building upon this series. Uh, I've gone over how to create a domain controller under Hyper-V, how to set it up on a VLAN, how to, uh, and now we're setting up workstations that are going to be attaching to that Active Directory domain controller. So as time goes on, we'll be building upon uh, and using these images in our virtual lab, just so I can show you how that's done. Now, there are other ways to do this, and I'm sure other people out there will have tell you in the comment section, no, no, you should do it this way, or you should do whatever way works best for you. It doesn't break something else is the way I would recommend you do it. So because each environment is going to be a little bit different out there, especially in a corporate environment, they actually make tools to make this easier. Something like system uh, center, virtual machine manager, that kind of thing springs to mind. But that's really for a larger enterprise environment. We may or may not do a video on that moving forward. It's very complicated and requires a lot of resources and SQL server to be set up and I just frankly don't know if I have the energy in me <laughs> to do that kind of video for the limited amount of people out there that are going to uh, use or appreciate it so there you go well there you go uh that's going to be the end of this video we hope you found it informational and we hope you found it entertaining and informative as always please leave your comments down in the comments section give us a like a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. We also mirror our content over on Library. Although Library is a little squirrely if you've ever used it. I really hope they get their act together because it does have the potential to really uh, kind of give uh, Google, uh, YouTube a run for its money. But, you know, I'm not going to hold my breath. I've heard that a hundred times before. Uh, donate if you're so inclined. We accept PayPal and we accept Patreon or any other means you want to. If you want to donate some equipment or something, just please contact me with information uh, before you donate. It's Unky Joe's Playhouse at gmail.com. Please come back and see us again. And don't forget, we'll see you on the other side.